Wearing hearing aids more than 10 hours a day has been shown to help children be ready for kindergarten in terms of speech and spoken language. That's a challenge, yes, but it's a challenge well worth it. This video is about strategies that could help you keep hearing aids where they need to be, on your child's ears. The more hearing aids are worn, the farther your child will go in terms of speech and spoken language. Keeping hearing aids on during the day will sometimes feel like an Olympic challenge. Let's compare keeping hearing aids on to the goal of carrying the Olympic torch from one Olympic host to the next. In 2016, the torch traveled all the way from Greece to Rio. The goal is to keep the torch lit so the torch can keep moving. Just like our goal is to keep hearing aids on to keep speech and language development moving. Keeping the torch lit is apparently a big challenge too. During the trip to the Rio Games, the torch actually went out 43 times. Imagine two runners, each with a torch. They run from the moment they wake until the moment they sleep. They can only move forward when the torch is lit. One has his torch lit the entire time. The other, only half the time. Of course, the runner with the lit torch goes twice as far. Now imagine your baby with hearing aids on for the entire time he is awake compared to wearing them only half the time. When considering how much your baby will benefit from the hearing aids, simple math says with hearing aids on only half the time, he will only go half as far. Or you could say, the more baby has his hearing aids on, the further he will go in terms of speech and language learning. In a way, challenges for both the torch and keeping hearing aids on can be grouped the same. Some of the challenges relate to harsh weather conditions. On the way to the Moscow Olympics, a gust of wind blew the flame out. Somebody here helps out with a lighter. Weather can challenge your ability to keep hearing aids on, too. Some other challenges relate to places. They took the torch over the mountains. I hope they remembered to take extra fuel, just like you will need to take extra batteries on your outings with baby. Other challenges relate to activities. In the Sydney Olympics, someone was surfing with the lit torch. That doesn't sound easy, but neither is keeping hearing aids on during finger painting. And other challenges might pop up at any time. Here a bystander sprays the torch with a fire extinguisher. Believe me, there will be unexpected obstacles to keeping hearing aids in place that pop up just as suddenly. These challenges we will call the unpredictables. So, how does your own daily relay go once your child wakes in terms of keeping hearing aids on? Let's follow Busy Baby and try our best to keep hearing aids on and working. Ready, set, go. And it's bedtime. How did it go today in your goal to keep hearing aids on? Let's look at common challenges that other parents of children who wear hearing aids have faced. We can then discuss how planning and strategies help them to get the hearing aids back on their child's ears. Just like the torch relay, the types of challenges parents face fall into common categories. First, let's look at weather challenges. Then we'll look at places. Of course, hearing aids have to keep dry in order to work properly. But what about rainy days? The less useful solution is to take off the hearing aids to protect them. Caps and umbrellas for when it rains and finding the right hat when it snows is a better option. An option that does not rob your child of rich and important language about the world outside. The world is sometimes wet. Time overnight in a dry aid kit can help hearing aids recover from light moisture. Make sure you use the dry aid kit every night to keep hearing aids ready to go for the next day. How about going out with baby? What are the challenges to keeping the hearing aids on in different places? Rear-facing car seats make it so that you can't watch what baby is doing. What's going on back there with those hearing aids? Car seats are a common challenge for parents working to keep hearing aids in for the first two years. Maybe pilot caps, like the bonnet this baby is wearing, can help reassure you that hearing aids are where they should be. It's nice to be able to sing or talk to your baby when he starts to fuss, and of course hearing aids on will help make that possible.
The two biggest worries for most parents outside the home is that they might lose a hearing aid or get hearing aids dirty. Again, the easy solution is to take the hearing aids off, but you lose with this solution. Taking hearing aids off robs your child of too many opportunities to hear and learn language. A much better solution are cords with clips. Sometimes you have to retrace your steps in the mall to find that sock your baby has pulled off when you weren't looking. You don't want to do that for an expensive hearing aid. Cords loop around the clear, curved part at the top of each hearing aid, which is called the ear hook. The bead at the back can slide to tighten things up, and it has a clip, which you can attach to baby's clothes at the back. In this way, a hearing aid may come off, but it won't fall down. You might see it dangling. Just reach over and put the hearing aid right back in. It's a handy option even in the house, especially once your baby is up and moving. Here is where it holds on to the hearing aid, around the ear hook, and here is where it clips on to clothing. If a hearing aid falls off, it's easier to find it hanging down your child's back than it is somewhere in the toy room. Does your baby spend time in someone else's care? If grandma or daycare takes over, then they are responsible for good care, and good care for your baby includes providing good language through hearing aids that are on and working. Explain to these caregivers the need for hearing aids. Show them how to put hearing aids on your baby and make sure they understand just how important they are for your child's speech and language development. Do they know how to check if the aids are working? Did you leave batteries with them? Teach them all about eyes open, ears on. Other caregivers need to know when the baby's eyes are open, ears have to be on. We've talked about some common challenges associated with keeping hearing aids on in nasty weather and throughout the different places you go with baby. In the Keep On, Keeping On video part three, we'll talk about activities in hearing aids and also the challenges that might be unpredictable. But these challenges are still something that we can prepare for. For now, let's try to take on both weather and places and increase the time your child wears his hearing aids. This will, of course, increase the amount and quality of language he hears through those hearing aids and will help him to go further in terms of speech and language development. Are you ready? Let's prepare. What are your challenges? Take some time and write chart notes about where and when you are successful and also make note of where and when challenges happen. Problem solve. Hopefully, some of the strategies we have discussed will help you. Work as a team with your audiologist and speech-language pathologist. Two or three heads are better than one. It's important to set yourself goals in the if-then framework. If my baby takes off his hearing aids, then I will work to immediately put them back in. Or if... I pick up my baby from his grandmother's house and his hearing aids are not on, then I will talk to her again about how important they are for his development. Set goals, reasonable goals. You may not get the hearing aids on in the car right away, so set a smaller goal of leaving them on right up to the last minute when your baby is in his car seat and putting them right back on the minute you take them out, for example. An Olympic medal represents hours and hours of training for the athlete. A dead battery represents hours and hours that it powered a hearing aid, sending your words to baby's brain to maximize language learning. It's something to celebrate. With each battery you change, reward yourself. Mark this symbol on your calendar or use the battery sticker to mark the day and use it as a free token to treat yourself to a coffee with a friend, a dinner out, or anything else you can think of to celebrate. As those batteries add up, so does the language your child acquires. Think of them as medals along a torch relay towards the goal for your child's development. Remember, wearing hearing aids more than 10 hours a day has been shown to help children be ready for kindergarten in terms of speech and language. Sometimes getting your child through sleet and snow, through all of the places he needs to go, can be challenging while keeping hearing aids where they should be, on little ears.